All right, amen. What a story that is. Hey, uh, let's welcome our, welcome our Alexander campus. Amen. Woo! Hey, and Alexander, I want, I want them to learn today how to have some heaven while they're still here on earth. Amen? And guess what, Pineville? I want you to learn that. You t- here talking about anxiety, and I want you to know one of the greatest causes of anxiety and pressure is we worry so much about what other people say about us. And what we're going to learn today is when we can learn more about what God says about us, if we quit worrying so much about what other people say about us. Hey, you know we're going to, uh, Journey Church is getting together for a trip for Israel. And if you're interested in that, you can check it off in your bulletin or you can talk to Heather about it uh, afterwards. I mean, hey, hey, that was Elijah where he, and, and there's good food there too, amen, of course. We got to have the food. But uh, like I said, if you're interested in that trip, you can just check it off and they'll, contact you and see about going there well like i said hey god never panics because god always has a plan we have a key verse that i want to read it's romans 14 verse 9 through 11 and it says this christ died and he rose again that's that's what easter is all about right the death burial and resurrection and say amen Amen. y'all gonna enjoy easter this year (laughs) Easter's all about Christ is not dead, he is alive. And the verse says, Christ died and he rose again for this very purpose. The very purpose of Easter is Jesus is not dead, but he is alive. Amen? Amen. So that he can be the Lord both while we live and when we die. Now see, what you don't know is death is not the end of life. Death is the beginning of life. And see, if we're not careful, we forget that death's the beginning of life. See, eternity, we're going to spend somewhere. Jesus says, hey, I want to be the Lord over the living and the dead. And and it proves that the death, burial, and resurrection, that he wants you to spend it with him. But he also wants us to learn something today. I want you to learn today that God prays, he told us to pray, that we can actually learn to enjoy some heaven while we're still here on earth. But he wants us to settle for sure that one day we're going to heaven. Amen? Amen. And it goes on, it says, uh, you have no right to criticize your brothers and look down on them. Remember, each of us, we're going to stand personally before the judgment seat of Christ. I am, you are, we all are. For as written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow before me and every tongue shall confess. Now, I'm not going to preach on that today because I'm going to teach today how to enjoy some heaven while you're here on earth. But let me tell you what, if you're not sure you're going to go to heaven, you don't get to enjoy the heaven while you're here on earth. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to talk about it in Revelation chapter 20. It talks about there's books, plural, that have everything you've ever done written in them. And there is a book, which is the Lamb's book of life. The books is where you judge by your works and, and, and you live life, you're frustrated and you're always tired because you're trying to work and get yourself to heaven. You won't get there that way. And there's the book in Revelation chapter 22, verses 11 through 15, that says, hey, your name is in there because of the Lamb book of life, Jesus Christ, okay? But Jesus is making it very clear it does matter what we do while we're here on earth. The truth is, The devil will try to get you to focus more on what's going on here on earth and what other people are saying while you're here on earth where you'll miss having some heaven while you're here on earth. The message is so important today. I went through most of my Christian life never really understanding that I could have some heaven while I'm here on earth. I I, I thought I had to wait till I got to heaven to really enjoy heaven. But the truth is, that's not biblical. The truth is, God said, hey, if we can really listen to this message today, if we can listen to learn and apply this message today, me and you can learn to enjoy some of heaven while we're here on earth. Now, listen, some of us are ready for some heaven while we're here on earth because you've been through enough hell. Amen? Amen? Okay, all right. God doesn't panic. God has a plan. Part of God's plan is to teach us how to have some heaven while we're here on earth. In, in Matthew 6, verse 9, the disciples, they come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. They knew that Jesus had some kind of this intimate relationship with the Father. It, it was like when Jesus prayed, things happened. Amen? I mean, and they did. I mean, Jesus could take, you know, he, he could take Two fish and feed 5,000. I mean, the blind could see, the crippled could walk, the dead would come alive. There's something about when Jesus prayed, things happened. Amen? 
And the disciples said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And he says, okay, I will. And he said, in this manner, therefore, pray. And he says, whose father? Whose father? So right now, right off the bat, he's trying to tell me, and he's trying to tell you, and he's trying to tell the disciples, that he is now our father. See, so long before that, in the Old Testament, it seemed like he was such a distant father. It seemed like he had to go through priests, and you had to sacrifice lambs before you could ever come into the presence of God. And Jesus said, now my father is your father. Isn't it great to know you got a daddy in heaven? I mean, don't you know that he's not only a father, but my father is in heaven, and hallowed be thy name. He said, listen, I want you to see him different. I want you to know that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you got a father now. Your father will be with you if you're at church. He's going to be with you at Monday. He's going to be with you with your way. He's going to be with them when they're deployed. Amen? Thank goodness you got a father. Amen? And not only you got a father, you got a father that said, hallowed be thy name. And hallowed be thy name means, sure, he's a reverence God. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. But it's a God that says, when they said, who do you say that I am? God said, I am who I am. He said, just tell him I am's coming. God is whoever he wants to be, whenever he wants to be, and whatever he wants to be. Amen? God, sometimes he's a God almighty. Sometimes he's a God of protection. Sometimes he's a God of provider. Sometimes for ladies, he's your husband. Sometimes people, he is our father. But he said, that, listen, I want you to know he's your daddy. And he's the hallowed be your name. You, you, you can never read that the same way when you understand that Jesus was trying to tell them, I want you to know you've got a father in heaven that has the power to meet every need in your life. Then he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is where? Did, did you know that Jesus said, hey, disciples, I want you to know it's okay. I want you to know, I want you to start praying. I want you to pray that you can finally have some heaven while you're here on earth. I want you to know, Journey Church, you watch it online, Alexander, that you can actually say it's okay, that Jesus said it's okay for me and you to pray to have some heaven while you're here on earth. Amen? So we can, we can say it's okay. That Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. He taught them to say, hey, I, I got a father that's in heaven. And my father has the provisions, the protection to whatever I need. And see, see, one of the ways you get some heaven while you're here on earth, every time you hear from the Father, you're getting to get some heaven while you're here on earth. I mean, I mean, and, and Jesus heard it. Jesus experienced heaven while he was here on earth. I mean, in Matthew 3, 16, it says this. And when he, Jesus, had been baptized... And if you're here today and you've never been biblically, publicly baptized, man, at the end of the service, you need to come today and say, man, I am ready to be baptized. Hey, Jesus came up immediately. How can you come up out of the water unless you go down into the water? People ask me a lot of that. Why do we baptize the way we do? Well, a good reason, because Jesus had to go down to come up. Amen? That's a good reason. And, and, immediately, uh, and, 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 and immediately from the water, and behold, what was open? Heavens. <laughs> They were open to him, and, and he saw a spirit of God descending from heaven like a dove and it lightened upon him. So in other words, heaven opened up, and so they're going to get the spirit from heaven while they're here on earth. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, stop for a minute. Every time we hear the voice of God from heaven down on earth, we can experience some heaven while we're here on earth. And today we actually have God's word. And let you stay with me. When you can experience God's word from heaven and it confirms with the Holy Spirit and it enlightens you what God's doing in your life, you get to experience some heaven while you're here on earth. Amen? And they said, the voice. The voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased. I mean, he was pleased that his own son got baptized, and I believe it still pleases the father, your father, my father, our father, when we're baptized. You want to experience some heaven? You ever been biblically, publicly baptized? You had to go down and come up. If you hadn't, today's a great day to do that. Did you know in Matthew 5, 3, you know what it says? It says, blessed are they poor? But blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Th those seem contrary to me. How, how can you be blessed and poor? How can you be born and blessed? 
How can the kingdom of heaven be when you're poor? It's because it says when you're poor, it means you're, you become totally reliant upon God. When you realize you have to be totally dependent on God, when you humble yourself and say, hey, God, it's, I have nothing else. I can't make it on my When you totally depend upon God, God says, I'm going to meet your needs like never before, and you're going to experience some heaven. Sometimes the greatest experiences we have in heaven when we have the greatest, you ready? When we have the greatest needs while we're here on earth. Sometimes you really don't know how bad you need God till you have nothing else in here. He said, hey, heaven steps in. Matthew 7, 11, look at this. I like this. If you then, being evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children, me and you, how much more will your father, do y'all understand over and over and over Jesus saying, don't you know you got a father that's in heaven? Don't you see more and more and more? He said, I want you to have a different relationship. I want you to have an intimate relationship. I want you to know that you've got a father, a daddy in heaven that's going to be with you no matter where you go. A father who is in heaven and he gives you good things to whom we ask. In other words, one of the ways you get to experience heaven and earth, hey, you got a father in heaven when you ask the right thing and he answers those prayers and you hear a voice from God and he confirms it. Hey, man, you're getting to experience some heaven on earth while you're still here. He doesn't want you to wait to heaven to, get, to experience some of heaven while you're here on earth. Amen. Listen, look, look at Deuteronomy said. Deuteronomy says you can have days of heaven. That the days and the days of your children they may be multiplied in the land of which your Lord swore upon the Father to give them like the days of heavens above the earth. I, he wants us to have some days on earth like heaven above. God does. So what I want you to know is it's really clear. God says, I want you to have some heaven while you're here on earth. He said it's okay to pray for it. It's okay when Jesus was baptized, he got the experience. When you hear the voice of God, even if it's you're reading your uh, Bible, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove in your heart, and you confirmed by God, you're getting to experience it. Did you know what the first, you know the first Easter? Y'all do know we're in the Easter season. Amen? Did, did you know what the first, first uh, celebration of Easter that Mary and Mary, they got to experience heaven while they were here on earth. They, they went thinking it was going to be the worst tragedy they had ever found. It was the greatest triumph they had ever experienced. Let, let me give you another example of heaven on earth. It's in Matthew 28, chapter 28, verses 1 through 8. Great experience. It says, And after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they came to see the tomb. Stop right there a minute. What did they come to see? The tomb. They came to see a tomb. They thought that Jesus was dead. And I want you to know before the story is over, he's not dead, but he's alive. Some of y'all are coming to church every single Sunday like Jesus is dead. Some of y'all are living a defeated, discouraged life instead of a victorious life. Some of you need to stop coming to the tomb. <laughs> that church sometimes used to be like a tomb. I mean, when I used to go to church when I was young, it was like a tomb. Matter of fact, if I smiled too much, my mother would get me. If I laughed, I was in trouble. But listen, listen, we're not in the tomb. <laughs> Amen? Don't come to church seeking a tomb. Come to church seeking a risen Savior. Amen? Don't come to church and live your life looking for a dead end, no future, no hope, no dream. I mean, he's not dead, but he's alive. He's not in the tomb. Amen? Quit living like that. Quit putting yourself through all that hell. Quit living like that. He said, I want you to have some heaven while you're here on earth. Start li stop living in your past. Start living for an exciting future. And most of all, stop living in, in tragedy and defeat and start living in victory and triumph. Amen? Because he said, and behold, <laughs> there was a great earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Where did the angel of the Lord descend from? Heaven. They're fixing to experience some heaven while they're here on earth he came and he rolled the, back the stone from the door and sat on it i wish i'd have had time i got to visit that place when i was in israel and uh next sunday maybe i, I can show you the period it it, it, it was great he, he 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 didn't roll the stone back to get jesus out jesus is already out he rolled the stone back where they could get in amen i mean i tell you what i mean he it, and and it, it was unbelievable so God wants us not to live in the past. He doesn't want you coming to church looking for the dead tomb. He wants you to live a life that's experienced a triumph, not tragedy. And then verse 3, it says, look, it says this. 
in his countenance, it, it, it was the angel. It was like lightning, and his clothing is white as snow, and that, that's the angel who came from heaven. Amen? And when the guards shook for the fear of him, and they became like dead men, they just fainted. And the angel answered and said to the women, don't be afraid. Listen, I know that you what seek Jesus who was crucified. Stop right there a minute. One of the ways that you get to experience heaven while on earth is when you seek Jesus. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I know the answer to your problem. Seek Jesus. The first thing I can tell you, if you're not experiencing some heaven while you're here on earth, the first step is begin to seek Jesus. Amen? And so when you start to begin to seek Jesus, it's, to begin, it's one of the keys to begin to understanding, experiencing heaven while you're here on earth. Verse 6 can radically change your life if you allow it. He's not here. Uh, Jesus, he's not dead. He's not in the tomb. He's risen. He overcame death. He defeated Satan. He has what? Risen. Okay, y'all ready? As he said. I, I want y'all to get this. You don't get anything else today. He's not here. He is risen. Get these three little words. As he said. Let's say them together. As he said. No, what? what this is, I, I never saw it before. He said, come to this place where I lady. But I want you to get as he said. Because see, Mary and Mary, who had an intimate relationship with Jesus, they came to the tomb and had this unbelievable tragedy in their life. And the angel said, I want to remind you what Jesus already said. I want you to remember what he said. See, this could change your life. Because when you feel defeated, when you feel discouraged, remember what Jesus said. See, when, you, when somebody comes and says something that really hurts you or maybe defeats you or feels like you're discouraged, quit worrying about what they said. Remember what? He said, when we come to the point when we really get this and we come to the point, no matter what's going on in our life, we need to be reminded what Jesus said about the situation. It doesn't matter what we see. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what we hear. What really matters is what Jesus said about the matter. Amen? I'm going I'm to come back to that because it's so big. You, you just can't imagine how it can change your life. See, they were experiencing some heaven while they're here on earth. Unbelievable. They, they were experiencing this new exciting news. They were experienced a miracle like unbelievable. Jesus is still in the miracle working business. He still wants to bring good, exciting news to you like never before. We've got to remember, it's not so much what we think, it's what, how we control what we think. It's not what we see, it's what God says. <laughs> it's not what others say that really matter. We've got to continue to remind ourselves, what did Jesus say about the matter? They faced what was going to be a tragedy. He reminded them what Jesus said about the matter. <laughs> Even though they had seen him crucified and put into a grave, what really mattered? He wasn't in there, was he? He said, I'm going to live. And he rose from the grave. It, it, it's so important if you could learn how to handle what people say to you. You, you understand one of the things that robs your joy? One of the reasons that you don't have heaven while you're here on earth is because you spend too daggum much time worrying about what other people say that does not really matter, and you don't spend enough time worrying about what Jesus says about the matter. That is good, Brother James. Amen? Amen. Do you get it, though? One of the main reasons you're not experiencing heaven on earth, you're wasting too much time worried about what other people say that doesn't really matter, and you're not spending enough time worrying about what Jesus says, which is what really matters. So how do you change it? Number one, you separate what people say, you ready, from who you are. You separate what people say from who you are in Christ. Because if you don't know who you are in Christ, you're allowing other people to determine who you are. And I know way too many people that have grown into adulthood that are still losing all their joy and happiness because they're so upset about what somebody else said. When you stay upset about what somebody else said, you're letting them determine who you are instead of Christ. Oh, James, this is good. Woo! I'm preaching it now. I can change your life. You go, man, you don't have to quit worrying about it. I go, home, oh, mom, I can't believe what's work. Somebody says something. Big deal, man. What did Jesus say? I mean, the real truth is, I mean, I love my wife. My wife loves me. We're one big happy family most of the time. <laughs> but, but, but even when we're not, that doesn't determine who I am. 
If I'm upset with Debbie, Debbie's upset with me. That's still not who I am. Man, I am who Christ said I am. What's the first thing you got to do? Y'all better be getting this. It's going to change your life. Do you want to change? You just want to come to church? You just want to try? Or or do you want to train? Do you want to change? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do when somebody says something to you, you're going to separate from what they said from who you are. Amen? Amen. All right, all right. Second thing you do, second thing you do is is, is you, you don't continue to play the negative things in your mind that you heard. You know, they went to the tomb. They could have said, no, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. And they said, hey, don't you remember? No, 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 I, he's dead. No, 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 he's alive. So you don't focus on he's a dead. Now what you focus on is what? He's alive. So you don't keep focusing on the negative things. You break that record and you start focusing on the positive thing. Nobody can control your mind but you. You want to keep controlling what somebody said, or are you going to focus on what Jesus said? i tell you what you do. Remind yourself over and over what Jesus said. Amen? What did the angel tell Mary and Mary? Hey, do you remember what Jesus said? The angel reminded Mary and Mary, he's, he's not dead, he's alive, just as he said he would be. Separate. Separate what they said from who you are in Christ. Don't compete the, repeat the negative, but learn. Learn for your good. Whatever's said, learn for your good. Not, not to hurt you, but if there's something good, learn from it. Amen? Change your life. I'm telling you what, if y'all learn this one thing, you'll have better marriage, you'll have better relationship. You can then enjoy some heaven while you're on earth. Amen? Okay, this is how you know who you are. Y'all ready? I'm not going to get to preach this whole thing. It doesn't matter. This is probably the most important thing. Did you come this morning and you were more upset about what somebody has said to you or about you this week than you are about what Christ said who you are? Tell us where you are spiritually. It's that easy. If you've been spending more time talking about what somebody else said about you and you've been more upset about what somebody else said or did to you, Instead of focusing on who you are in Christ and what he said, you're not where you should be, and you're allowing the devil to re- rob your heaven while you're here on earth, and that's what he wants you to do. Okay, let's go. Whew, there is no greater joy to know who you are, who you are, and what you're to do. Matthew 28, 7, let's go on. <laughs> that was all for free. Now they learned who they were. They know whose they were. In verse 7 of Matthew 28, now they're going to learn what they were to do. The angel tells them, go quickly. Now they're getting the message. They say, no, go quickly and you go tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. They found out who they were, whose they were. Now they know what they were to do. And, and go to Galilee and, and there send you. Behold, have I not told you? So they went quickly from the tomb with great joy they ran to the disciples. Guess what? When we're doing what God told us to do, the way that he told us to do, we'll not only experience great joy, that's part of experience heaven while you're here on earth. Amen? Okay, I, I got a rock. <sighs> Why do most people don't get to experience it? You, you just learned one of the greatest reasons. You're more worried about other people say than what God says, Right? The second reason, and I'm going to show you in the Bible. The first reason, you're more concerned with what other people say than what God says. If you don't get anything else, what are you going to get? When I lose my joy, when I don't have heaven on earth, one of the, one of the first reasons is I'm more worried about what other people say than what God said. I, even Mary, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the angel had to remind them what Jesus said. So I'm trying to remind you when you get upset to remind yourself what Jesus said about the situation. Amen? Number two, number two. Second reason, you don't want to pay the price. You just don't want to pay the price it would take to experience heaven while you're here on earth. Jesus taught about it in Matthew 13, 43. He taught why most people don't experience it. He, he said, hey, uh, then the righteous, they're going to shine forth as sun in the kingdom of the Father. I can tell you, I'm not going to preach on that one right now, but when you're right with God, you have a different countenance. Y'all ready? On earth and in heaven. There will be different degrees in heaven, and people will shine like different stars in heaven. Anyway, he who has ears, though, let him hear. That's what I want you to know. If you have ears today, hear. Amen? What does he want you to hear? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that was hidden in a field, which a man, and when he found it hid, he, for the joy over it, he goes and he sells all that he has, and he buys a field. Okay? And again, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking a beautiful pearls. What did he do? Well, who when he had found the one pearl with great price, he went, he sold all that he had, and he bought it. Can I ask you a question? Well, what was Jesus teaching about? What was the common denominator? The kingdom of heaven and how to have it. He was teaching, hey, I'm, I'm giving you a parable. I'm giving you a, a picture. I'm trying to give you a lesson how to have the kingdom of heaven. That was the common denominator. What was the second common denominator? The price you had to pay. What was the third common denominator? The great rewards you get. They all said, hey, it's worth selling everything I have because of the joy that it brings. It, it's teaching the kingdom of heaven. Has the, are you ready? Are y'all ready? The answer is amen. Are you ready? It's teaching that the kingdom of heaven has the power and value to meet any and every need in your life. That it's teaching, if you really understood what I was teaching today, you would sell or remove anything in your life that keeps you from experiencing heaven while you're here on earth. Brother James, whoa, we're preaching today if y'all don't know it, man. Y'all are getting something that you can change your life and the gates of hell cannot even prevail. Amen? Let's rock it, man. So what's the problem? What did I tell you? What's the problem? Number one, number one, you're too worried about what other people say to you and about you. Second of all, most people are not willing to what? Pay the price. Three, most people go through life, whether it's here or church, for what they can get, not what they can give. Yet the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. I told you about the recent survey they did with congregation and pastors. Same question, what's the church for? The pastor says to seek and save the lost, which is what Jesus said. The congregation says it's to meet my needs. And so therefore it proves, see, see, so it's just what I said. So you cannot experience heaven while you're here on earth until you're willing to do several things as we get ready to close straight because we're running out of time, Dad Gunn. <sighs> okay. Number one, quit worrying so much about what everybody else said. Everybody here has let that bother them this week. Now just come and confess it here in a minute, all right? Second of all, say, hey, I'm willing to pay the price with my time, my energy, and my tithe. Third of all, learn is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Stop being so daggum selfish. Fourth and most important, you ready? You can't experience heaven on earth till you have a little heaven in you. The first experience of heaven in you, when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit from heaven descends and lives in you. So if you don't have heaven in you, <laughs> you can't experience heaven while you're here on earth. So if you've never done that, in just a moment when I give the invitation, you need to come and make sure that you are basing your faith of going to heaven on the blood of Jesus Christ. So you say, hey, I, 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 I want to do that. Man, did you see that God the Father descended a dove from heaven when his son was baptized? He said, that's my beloved son who I'm well pleased. If you've never been biblically baptized since you were saved, today is the day to do that. Maybe you're here today and you were like Mary and Mary. They, they ran to the tomb and you're just living in tragedy and defeat and you need to be reminded today. Whatever the problem is you're going through, you need to be reminded today. What's Jesus say about it? Maybe you came fearful today and you need to be reminded that God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Maybe you said, I just can't keep going, and Christ said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Maybe you came and you said, well, I'm just worried, worried, worried. No, no, no. He said, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. See, some of you just need to be reminded what Jesus said about your situation, and you don't need to go home the same way. Some of you maybe need to come and join this church. Come rededicate your life. Some of you need to ask for forgiveness. Some of you know people you need to go and ask for forgiveness. So if you stand, let me pray with you and pray for you. God will allow you. He'll tell you. The Holy Spirit, the heaven that's living in you, ask him, God, I just thank you for our church. I thank you for our people. God, most of all, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you that we can have some heaven while we're here on earth. I thank you that we can have the Holy Spirit that lives in us. I thank you that we have your word and our word and the Holy Spirit can confirm that you and heaven are our Father. God, I pray that everybody here today would relax. If you, if you got the Father... 
If you don't have God as your father, that you would come and settle that. If you came and you're worried that the hallowed be thy name, that you'd let your daddy take care of the problems. If you have a provision, let your daddy take care of it. If you need protection, let your daddy take care of it. You know, and, and one of the ways we get to experience heaven while earth, he said, his father knows how to give us good gifts. It's through prayer, and maybe you have a prayer that you need God to answer this morning. What a great time to come. So whatever God's laid upon your heart, would you come today and let God have his will and his way? It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.